Welcome to another broadcast of Changing Change Ministry here on Kingdom Purpose TV. I'm your host, Rochelle Owens, and God has a word for you today. We are finishing our topic of the X Factor, Exodus. Last week, we were in Exodus 16. We're going to get a little bit of background in it on how God freed us from slavery. Exodus just means to leave, to exit, to depart from. We are departing from bondage. We are departing from depression. We are departing from lack. We are moving into the promised land. This is 2022. God has something for us and we definitely do not want to miss it. So let's go ahead and get in the word today. As I say, we were in Exodus chapter 16 last week where God was bringing the children through the promise to the promised land. He delivered them from slavery and bondage in Egypt. Oh my God. You know that the word says in all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding, and get knowledge. And we are just going to impart a little bit of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge today of how good God is, how totally awesome God really is, how God wants us healthy, wealthy, and wise. And we're start. Uh, we're just going to back up just a little bit and get a little history on how God takes care of his children, how God takes care of us. In Exodus 12, it's about as far back as we're going to go in the history of it today. And that's where the children are coming out of bondage. They're coming out of Israel. They're coming out of slavery. And God gave them so many specific instructions for every day. From the day before they came out, how to prepare coming out, the provisions that he made for them. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He had the Egyptians that were their slave masters to actually provide them silver and gold and clothing for their journey. Now, God makes our provisions. Now, how can he have your enemy to supply your needs for your trip? And this is silver and gold and clothing for them. Glory, hallelujah. I'm telling you, God is the way. God is the key to life. God is the key to abundance. God said, all the, all the riches are mine. All the silver is mine. All the gold is mine. Everything is mine. Riches and honor come from the Lord Almighty all by himself. And that's why we want to encourage you today to go deeper in your study with God. Go deeper in your relationship with God. Go deeper in the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Y'all know I get excited. Oh, I get so excited in God. In Exodus 12, the children were leaving slavery. They were preparing to go. And he gave them so many instructions of what to do, what to eat, how to travel, everything. And this is how God takes care of us. And what I took from the entire thing myself is God is so close to us that he told them what to eat. And he said for seven days that you will eat unleavened bread. And he told them how to prepare it and make sure that you have no yeast in it. And that's specific. That is such a simple instruction for us to follow. And we know uh, last week's uh, word on following God's instructions that he supplied manna and he supplied quail. And if we follow your instructions, 
100% to the letter, we will live a 100% full and abundant life because we live the life in you. We live the life that you have prepared for us. You do not want us to be in bondage. You don't want us to be in slavery. You don't want us depressed. You are love, peace, joy, happiness. Oh, hallelujah. And that's where you want us to be. You want us to live the abundant life. And how do we get there? Just follow your instructions. The instructions are so simple. And the instructions that he gave the children of Israel, the Israelites coming out of their bondage in Egypt, are the same for us today. If you will just follow my instructions, you will live in the promised land. You will live in the land of milk and honey. You will live abundantly. Be strong and be of good courage. When you come up on your enemy, know that I am there. Oh my God, who know that I am there. I love the way as we went through Exodus 13, how God brought the kids out of the children of the Israel, the Israelites out of Egypt. He brought them out with a cloud by day and a flame of fire by night. He brought them out in comfort. The cloud by day, he took them through the desert. He decided that he wasn't going to go through the country of the Philistines because they would war with the children, with the Israelites. And so he said, well, if they go to war, as soon as they come out, then they might revert back and decide that they want to go back back to their bondage and back to their slave masters. So I'm going to take them through the desert up against the Red Sea. And see, I know a lot of us have heard about uh, Moses part in the Red Sea, but God intentionally took them on their journey directly to the Red Sea. He took them himself. God himself was the cloud by day, and he was the pillar of fire by night. And that way he would always have the sky lit up so they can see. And the desert is a very, very hot and dry place. So he was the cloud by day to keep them comfort and to keep them cool, the same way it is outside right now. When it's so hot outside, we all want just to, we want just to have a little bit of comfort. And if we get a nice cloud with no rain, we just love it. And that's how it feels. And I'm like, oh my God, I just love every minute of it. And he just took them nicely and smoothly and neatly. And they had their dough and they had everything packed and they had was ready to go. They had their silver, they had their gold, they had their clothes, they had everything that they needed to make this journey. Oh, hallelujah. And that's the God that we serve today. He will supply all of your needs to make your journey. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will be right there with you. And this day, 2022, God will be your cloud by day and he will be your pillar of fire by night. He will show you the way. He will light up the way. He will keep your way peaceful. Oh my God, I can't just say it again. When the Lord is your shepherd, there is no want at all. The Israelites did not have to want for anything at all whatsoever. Nothing for their entire journey. They didn't have to. And even with God not taking them through the country of the Philistines, God could have fought the battle for him, for them. He always do. 
but he didn't want any one to be uncomfortable whatsoever that they might say, okay, this may be a little bit too hard for me right now. I don't have that much faith. My faith has not increased because remember, the Israelites were in slavery in Egypt for 430 years. So they were accustomed to a certain way and their faith is not that high because they're under the taskmaster or the slave master. Okay, so they're just taking orders like servants and bond slaves is, is what they were. So God did not want any opposition whatsoever. He did not want them to be scared going through the land of the Philistines. So he took them straight across the desert and he carried them like babies. Oh my God, if you knew, as we know, God is there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, guiding you in your directions. We must learn how to take instructions from God and we must learn how to follow them and act on them precisely as he give them to us. I recommend everyone read Exodus 12 and how he told them the, how to use the unleavened bread and no yeast in the bread and just make themselves because you know the food that you eat is um it's a little difficult when you're going on a long way to travel i'll just make it simple like that okay we know how we get full and we get tired and then this is healthy god wanted them 100 percent healthy especially they're going to the land of milk and honey i like the way he said that he named the promised land. I'm taking you to the land of milk and honey. I'm like, wow, that's a good analogy right there because we know milk as a baby, that's what sustains life. A baby only drinks milk and milk and milk till it gets older and stronger and stronger. They do not eat food on the first day that they're born. You give them milk two or three, four times a day in portions. And that's what God was saying. You take your small portions and you do it exactly this way and you will get stronger and stronger and stronger because I'm taking you all the way to the promised land. Follow me. I'm a cloud by day. I'm your way. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the light. I'm your fire by night. So it gets really, really dark in the desert. And it gets really, really cold also. Okay, the desert is hot all day. And it's cold all night. So the sun is beaming on you all day. And it's just desert, desert land, deserted. No oasis. The water and everything is gone. And then it's extremely cold at night. It's a bitter cold and it's also dark. There's no lights out in the desert, okay? Oh my goodness, hallelujah. And so he is your light. He is your lamp. Woo, Lord, that's another sermon right there. And you just follow his way. So therefore you can travel all night long. You do not have to stop. You get your rest and you travel and you just follow him. And there's nothing more important than letting the Lord lead you through your life and leading you through your journey through life. Because as he said in Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. Let my plans work out for you. Follow my instructions and you will see the promised land. You will see your dreams. You will see your success. You will see prosperity. You will see it. God guarantees this. And all we have to do is take our free will and follow him. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I like the way he said in uh, the 13th chapter of um, 
exodus that we're in, where in the beginning of the 13th chapter, as they had left, he said, now you've left the land of Egypt, consecrate yourselves, just consecrate yourselves, just consecrate your firstborn of everyone. He said, man and beast, all of the children, all of the animals, the cows, the horses, everything. You are coming out of the darkest place ever. Consecrate yourselves unto me. Consecrate your firstborn to me. And consecrate only means to make them holy. It is an investment for future purposes of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Is consecrate them to make them holy unto God. That's basically about it because this is your future. This is your generations. These are going to be the next people that are going to stand before God. And these are everything. He said, I want everything here consecrated. Consecrate the firstborn, everything, man and beast. I'm like, whoo, hallelujah. That means your food is going to be good. Your animals are going to be good. Your horses are going to be good because you have devoted them to the Lord. You have set them apart for God Almighty to do whatever his plans is. You're coming out of somewhere. You don't know what's going on. You're following God. And he says, now set these apart for me, for my purposes, for my glory, and watch me work all the way to the promised land. And that's all you have to do. I mean, everything stays with you, but you belong to God. Now God can impart into you and God can use you for his work for future purposes. That's the greatest investment of your life to consecrate your children, your house, your family, yourself. You are set apart for God's purpose in life. And whatever God tells you to do, just do it. Follow his instructions 100%. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love that because you go into the land of milk and honey. And milk has its nutritional values. It has its strength. It brings you strength. It helps you grow. And honey has medicinal value. Honey is antibacterial, honey is antifungal, honey is a, it keeps your blood flowing good, it keeps your cholesterol down, and I'm like, okay, so this is so cool, and I like the analogy that God used of the land, the promised land. It's healthy, it's wealthy, and it's wise. Woo, hallelujah. It's the land of milk that makes you strong, that makes you grow, that nourishes you, mind, body, and soul. And it's the land of healing, which is honey. All healing properties are in that honey, and it's sweet, and it's not too sweet. I was like, oh my God, hallelujah. You keep your blood flowing right. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hope you guys are getting something out of this today because God is life. God is love. And all God wants to do is for you to follow specific instructions that he gives you to have your abundant life, to have your peaceful life, and to have your dream life. And that's basically it. That's basically it. And we are his children, and he knows that. And even with the Israelites, as he brought them out to a perfect world in him, and he led them himself, they still grumbled a little bit every now and then. 
They still wondered about this and wondered about that. They were still normal. They were still natural. They were still human. And we are too. And we are too. They still had questions. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When God took them to the Red Sea, and he did it on purpose. And then he wanted to kill everything behind him. All that darkness that they had been in. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. And he did it for a specific purpose. He said, now all of my people, the Israelites, will know that I'm God. Because I'm with them 24 hours a day. And they see me. And they can feel me. And they can see the light. They can see the clouds. They know nothing else is taking them through this journey but me. However, now the Egyptians will know that I'm God too. All of the slave masters, all of the oppressors, I will show them that I am God too. So he hardened their hearts and Pharaoh, the king, Followed after them, he like changed his mind because he said, I'll never touch those Israelites again because God is with them. But he wanted, God wanted all of the Egyptians to see, all of the whole country of Egypt to see that I am the most high God over every God you guys have. And I want y'all to remember that for the rest of your life from generation to generation to generation. So the Egyptians came after the children of Israel and they're following them and the army came and everything and Pharaoh sent his best army. And those are the ones. And the children of Israel were like, okay, so where are we going to go now? What are we going to do? Oh my God, they're coming after us and our enemy will chase us. That's just letting us know that God is with us and our enemy will chase us also, but they have no win, none at whatsoever. God will fight our battle for us and God will give us additional instructions of how to get through it. Because Moses told the children of Israel, he was like, just stand still. And see the goodness of God. Just stand still and see the glory of God. And God said, told Moses, he said, keep it moving. Keep it moving. And Moses like, there's nothing in front of me but the Red Sea. And it's one of the biggest, deepest rivers that you can ever go through. It's a total ocean. He was like, okay. He said, Everybody move, and they're going towards the Red Sea, and there's nothing around them. Is the army chasing them, finna kill them, and they about to drown in the Red Sea. But they had, Moses had so much faith in God that Moses, and I was like, this is totally awesome. Because Moses said, just stand still and watch God work. I don't care who chasing you. I don't care. They're the best soldiers. They're the best men that ever. You have the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force, Marine after you. Just stand still and watch God work. That's a lot of faith. And that's what I took out of there. That is so much faith. Because everyone else, including me, would be shaking in my boots. I'm like, what? Oh, we're surely going to die. And that's what they said. And God told them, no, just keep moving. Just go straight into the sea. And he told them to hold your staff up. And the sea just parted wide open. Let them go through on dry ground. And I'm like, dry ground? It wasn't sticky. It wasn't muddy. It was dry ground. I'm like, glory, hallelujah. They traveled for the whole night while the army was chasing them. The cloud was there in the day. The pillar of fire was there in the night. And then God himself 
because he was, the Lord was the cloud. Himself, he moved the cloud back between the Israelites and the army. That means God stood, Jehovah God, in between them. And he covered the, in the army up that it was so dark that they couldn't see anything. And the pillar of fire was still going. And then I'm like, and the angel of God, I'm like, it's, this is good. This is real good. The angel of God moved from the front to the back and he moved behind them. So the angel of God stood that no one touches God's children. No one touches God's anointing. No one comes near God. I was like, this is good. And guess what, you guys? God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The angel of God moved from the front to the back and stood on watch. God moved in the pillar of cloud from the front to the back and stood on watch. And the children and the Israelites just went straight through the Red Sea Whew, on dry ground, still needing nothing, still doing nothing, still under the protection of God through the entire enemy attack. And that was one of the biggest miracles ever. The sea parted and stood straight up. And that's what God can do for you today. That's what he can do for your household. That's what he can do for your marriage. That's what he can do for your children. That's what he can do for your finances. He's the same God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to finish this up on next week. And I just want you to be able to understand how you follow the instructions of God. How when he tells you what to Eat. He just told them what to eat, how to prepare their food, how to cook it. Don't boil it at all. Cook it over the fire. Do not put yeast in your bread. Just follow. Eat the bread in the day and the manna, eat the bread in the day and the manna at night. Seriously? Eat the bread in the day and the quail at night. I'm going to supply everything for you every minute of the day, 24 hours a day. Just follow these instructions. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes the road looks tough. Sometimes the road looks rough. But if you follow me, if you follow the Lord, you will have success throughout your entire journey. You will have success from the beginning to the end and all the way through the middle. It won't say it won't be up and down. It says it'll be hot in the desert all day, and I will be your comfort. It says it'll be dark and cold at night, and I will be your comfort. It says that your enemy will chase after you, and I will be your comfort, and I will defend you. Oh, and the angel of God will protect you. Oh, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. That's a good word today.